So I asked my subscribers to send me a chest. They could put anything they wanted in it, and they could ask me to do pretty much whatever they liked with the contents inside. And you guys answered. So here we have 10 mystery chests. Each contains something completely different from the rest, but they all have their very own mystery challenge. And we're going to complete all of them. So subscribe yourself if you like what you see. I'm Simply Sark, and let's get started. You have to make art out of no AI floating sheep of various colours. Okay, so this is fairly straightforward. Instead of using wool to make some art, uh, we're going to use sheep, which makes total sense. We're going to use the sheep as a canvas. Um, bit silly, but kind of fun as well. Okay, so there wasn't actually any no AI sheep or any dye in the chest, so we just had to do everything myself. Um, but like I said, the idea is actually very simple. We just got the canvas so we can just paint on it like so. Uh, and you know what, actually, as weird as it is, it actually does look kind of cool. So uh, now we just got to figure out what we're going to draw on here. Okay, so here is my painting of sheep on sheep. You know, I've got to admit, it actually does look, it actually does look pretty cool. My PC is not happy about this many entities on screen, but it looks kind of interesting and it's, uh, <laughs> it's a way to do things, I suppose. Sup, suck. Build your YouTube profile picture with these materials. So here is a picture for reference. It's a blue guy with a pickaxe, pretty simple. We got these materials. Now there's three ways you could do this. You could either build pixel art, you could just recreate the model, or what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a perspective recreation. So like I just said, we're gonna try to create an actual recreation. So I've gone with some light blue uh, wool for the highlights and some light blue concrete for the lowlights. Okay, so here is the finished recreation. I will admit the pickaxe is a little bit dodgy. It's a little bit dodgy, but not terrible. Not absolutely terrible. Let's view this from perspective and see what it looks like. Um, there you go. Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's a little bit messy, but I'm actually quite happy with it. It's cool to make large structures in Minecraft, but where builders really scratch their heads is building the small things. So, for my challenge, you'll have to build the most compact medieval horse-drawn carriage you can build. Okay, so I actually really like this one because it's pretty much exactly what I had in mind when I uh, set the challenge. Uh, a lot of people weren't really following the rules, but this guy, this guy gets it. And we're going to do this one in survival and use the finite amount of resources that he's given us to build a carriage. The timing, the timing that this guy should show up on this challenge just right now, it's, it's almost comical. So this guy has actually been really, really stingy. There is not many resources here. Um, it kind of looks a bit like a bear right now. A bear, a bear drawn carriage. Uh, we have some wheels. Um, these ones are real. Uh, the rest of the corners are like imagination wheels at the moment. All right, guys. So this is what I've got. <sighs> it's... It's not too great. It's not too great. I ran out of building materials. Um, it kind of looks like some kind of weird motorbike or something. I don't know. These are the wheels. There's something attached to them, so I don't know if it can actually go. Um, that's the best I could come up with. Very limited resources. That was actually really tricky. Uh, and we used these guys because they just showed up and I thought it would be kind of funny. Dear Simply Sark, I challenge you to recreate any scene from the great classic, The Odyssey, using the blocks in a chest. I'm being forced to read this to school, so now you must relive it as well. Good luck. So it's been a while since I've been in school and I can't really remember the Odyssey. Um, I think there's a Cyclops in it, but I'm not sure if this is in the Odyssey, but I know that in Greek mythology, there's Medusa. So let's do Medusa. So here is our girl Medusa. Now her thing is kind of like being very snaky. So I've made her very like serpentine. In fact, she almost looks a little bit like a mermaid um, and given to her some snake hair. Also made her a little bit sassy because I just feel like she probably would be a little bit sassy. Now Medusa um, is very snake-like, but she also has the other thing, which is she basically turns any guy who looks her to stone, which is a little bit unfortunate. This guy, he's not having a good day. He's turning to stone because he looked at her. <laughs> So Johnny Hotshot has challenged me to build a device to shoot a firework rocket 32 blocks horizontally to kill a cow. You know what? I reckon I can do it. So we've got a cow over there. Now, I thought this was going to be really, really simple because I actually made this exact type of mechanism like six or seven years ago. So I figured, hey, you know what? It probably still works exactly the same. Unfortunately, it does not work exactly the same. It is completely and utterly broken. Okay, so this is what I got for you. It's quite simple, but it does get the job done. Not in one shot, it takes two shots. I don't know if that was the rule, if it needs to be done on one or two, but it does kill the cow eventually. So I kind of cheated a little bit here by putting a wall up there, 
Um, because something I was finding is that it's actually really hard to slow fireworks down. Like, it's easy to make them go horizontal like so, but they just kind of go forever. And, uh, with the materials I got, I wasn't really sure actually how to slow them down. So, kind of a half victory, kind of a half cheat. I guess it's for you to decide. Hello, Mr. Sark. My task for you is to create a three-way battle between the overworld, the nether, and the end. Cheers, Eddie. I will definitely give that a try. Okay, so this is what I came up with. Now, because we're doing a three-way battle between the overworld, the nether, and the end, I thought an invasion type event would be the best way to go about it. Now, I chose this kind of like beach setting because I thought it would be quite cool. Um, and as you can see, we have quite a few portals uh, <laughs> doing stuff around here. So we've got this one, which is just firing fireballs, destroying the terrain. Uh, over there, we've got some lava seeping through. And even this uh, nether fortress over here is trying to get into the overworld. Over here, we have a gigantic magma cube trying to jump in. Now, because the uh, the end portals are actually horizontal, we have to go with something a little bit different. So instead, the, the end portals are actually trying to abduct the overworld back into the end. So you can see this chunk is actually being lifted off into the end. Uh, same over here, and over here we actually have an obsidian pillar which is trying to plant itself into the overworld, so very ominous. I declare the challenge of boats. Only the materials in this chest can be used to build as many boats of as much quality as you want. Okay, so we can make as many boats as we like using a fairly generous amount of materials. Now instead of just making the same boat over and over again, I think we're going to try to create a few different variations. Alright, so here is boat number one, just a very simple little sailboat, it's very cute. Now we are actually allowed to use crafting derivatives, so banners and fences are totally fine, and uh, that's pretty much boat number one. Next up is the kayak, or canoe, never really sure the difference, but it's got multiple seats and it's quite slender. Um, I've actually used this little trap door trick here to kind of give like a bit of a pointy end on both sides, and you know what, I think it looks pretty cool actually. And finally, we have a raft, which I think is fairly decent. Uh, I tried to go for like a tribal look, and I think I did an okay job. Uh, I used some trapdoors to create this kind of like offset effect with the logs, and I think that looks kind of cool too. Hi, you need to build a new and improved mine shaft. So Xbox Llama wanted a naturally spawning cave, that is absolutely fine. We're going to pick this spot right here, because it's got a cool little fork in the road. Now we're probably going to try to stick with the default mine shaft experience, so lots of uh, cave spider spawners, etc. Okay, so let me show you what I come up with. Now, because the cave is quite chaotic, it's quite hard to build like symmetrically, so we kind of just went with the flow of the cave. Uh, every so often we have these uh, support pillars, and I've also tried to kind of like create this like barrier, like maybe it was sealed away at some point in time, who knows. I actually put the spider spawners dangling from the ceiling like this. I actually thought that looks better than how they normally naturally spawn in the game. In fact, over here, I've actually created a little bit of a trap like, ooh, gold. But up here, there is actually a spider spawner, which will uh, spawn spiders in your face. <laughs> One of the challenges was to incorporate a little bit of redstone into the build. So I left these undetonated TNT blocks throughout the mineshaft as well. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to construct a Rube Goldberg machine using only the provided resources. The goal is to open the provided spruce doors. All right, so these were the materials that we had at our disposal. And this is what I came up with. It's pretty small scale, but it should work, but I haven't actually tested it yet. Let me explain how it's supposed to work. All right, so the door needs to be opened, so we press the button. This uh, pushes this piston with redstone down here, triggers this signal to go down here, unleashes this redstone torch, which has a, uh, a sword in here, in this hopper. This travels down the hopper chain, which arrives in this dropper. This triggers the, uh, the comparator, activates the dropper. It falls into the bubble stream, and it should get shot all the way up here, which lands in this stream up here. It then travels down the icy road onto this pressure plate. Uh, each of these pressure plates, uh, the, the, the dispensers, have villages in them, and this will create a chain reaction down here. This will trigger this lamp down here, which will eventually melt this ice. Then we have all this uh, sand here, which will eventually fall once the ice melts. And this final sand over here will actually complete the circuit here, which will uh, turn off the redstone and open the door. Okay, let's give it a try and hope for the best. It might not work. We're just going to have to hope for the best. Sword goes up here, travels along the icy road, reaches the plate, triggers a chain reaction, melts the ice, triggers this, and the door is opened. Just about. Hi, you simply suck. First, I want to say that I love the way you think, and I would like to see you build some kind of forest or something with the materials in the chest. Dude, I can totally do that for you. So this is what we've got in the chest, and what we're going to try and probably do is we're going to do something in this swamp, and I'm thinking maybe like a big tree. 
All right, so this is what I came up with. It's a giant tree. I think I did an okay job. Trees are pretty pretty just tricky to do, and giant trees are even harder to do. Um, so all things considered, I think it actually turned out quite well. I've added a little bit of decorations, some like roots and stuff, and some lanterns, and there is the tree. I hope you like it. But that is pretty much all there is to it. I hope you enjoyed this kind of more community-focused video, and if you'd like to see some more in the future, just let me know. Uh, but anyway, guys, that is pretty much all this to it. Cheers for watching. I have been Simply Sark, and I will catch you in the next one.